It was time for us to call back Elise. It was also time for us to pay Garchi again because yeah. And we needed some money. So it was it was time to get back. And not have some big talks here. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Oh, we would get back. Garchi needed some things and we needed some things done. It's time to get back to Elise about the serial number of the strange arm. So. We walk through the rain. Ah, what a ah, what a shitty weather that is. It's also grey. At least, at least the disco in our head. In the disco in our head, our thoughts were dancing, dancing even. Dancing even Britishly. The sun shone and it rained. Or was it snow? Hey, what, what? There. Working class drunk. You know what this means, right? Case solved. Cracked it. All in a good day's work. Wait, what did, did I crack exactly? What do you mean, what did I crack? Look at how working class that drunk is. It's, it's her husband, the missing husband. Yes, and you found him. Now go and tell the working class woman. Protect and serve, recruit. Didn't she repeatedly tell you her husband isn't missing though? But he is missing. You heard her. The worry in her voice. Give me champagne, I'm going in. There's no need for champagne when there's honor, recruit. Go and tell the working class woman what you found, right now. Oh, where was she even? I think she was, was she here? Wasn't she here? She was, wasn't she reading? Who is that? <laughs> oh yeah, here she is. <laughs> She's still searching for a book. Her eyes wandering over the colorful grid of soft covers. Protect and serve, ma'am. I found your husband. God damn it, I already told you. My husband isn't missing. <laughs> she crosses her arms. But you said you didn't know where he was. And I specifically added that I didn't need to know where he was. Well, I found him nevertheless. I'm that good. Very well then. Where is he? <laughs> Uh, head there. Point to the working class the drunk down near the sea. Excuse me? I, I don't follow. There's something else hiding in her voice, though. A trace of worry. Yeah, no, I found a working class drunk and I thought he might be yours. Right, because working class women come with alcoholic husbands. You know what? She glances over your shoulder towards the drunk. Remember, about that what? Never ever say what. Something bad, I guess. I'm sorry. I say stupid things sometimes. I didn't mean to annoy. You were right. I do have an alcoholic husband. Although not that one. So he's missing as well? No, he's not. Or maybe he is. I don't know. He's probably in the park or in Shambrock somewhere. Drinking with his friends. She looks away. I haven't seen him for... Well, to hell with him. She's completely forgotten about her books, staring blank into the distance instead. There. She's worried now. Oh, great. We made her worry. Kim, is it just me, or do we have a missing person's case here? I wouldn't be so sure. Kim rep replies before turning to face the working class woman. Man, just to be completely clear. Do you want to report it to the police? Report what? He's just out drinking with his friends. I'm sure the police has better things to do than to chase down local goofballs. Honestly, I just think missing persons case is uh, mysterious. They are not all they're cracked up to be, officer. Why not? Because people either show up on their own or you never find them. He says with a flush of teeth. 
Well, I still want one. I want a missing person's case. All right, then. He has questions now. What kind of questions? What does your husband look like? Honestly, not that different from you. She eyes you from head to toe. So he's disco? Oh, thank God, no. It hasn't come down to this yet. She nearly begins to laugh. Why did you say that your husband resembles me, then? Well, he's slightly chubby. I see. What else? What else? He was wearing a dark brown leather jacket with a bright blue inner lining. The lining is hand-sewn. I made it myself. She sighs, her voice slightly quivering when she adds... It's his cool jacket. God knows it's too cold to run around in this, but he refuses to change. Ah, they love each other still. I even tried throwing it away once, but he just dug it out of the bin. Can you believe it? She looks back at you, shaking her head. Well, if the jacket is really that cool, then I can totally understand that. Well, what can you do? I hope that at least that extra lining helps him keep warm at night. I wouldn't like him to catch cold. She's thinking about him out in the cold, in some park, or on the coast. And it's making her more and more worried. When did you last see him? Yesterday morning. He went to the library. He went to retrieve my book and he promised, he promised, he'd walk straight back home. Because we talked about this. We talked about not wandering off again. I, I don't know what to do. I honestly don't know what to do with his addiction. It just makes me feel weak. It's tragic. Gone for around 36 hours then. Damn, this is a missing persons case. She turns away from you in an attempt to recover. I think I got it. Thanks. He went to the library. So you are going to look for him. Yeah, we'll bring him back home to you. Thank you. Please do. Even though I'm sure he will return home by himself. I'm still sure of that. She tries to maintain a brave front, even though her eyes reveal the opposite. I'm sure he will too. When he does, would you let Prison 57, Kim Kitsuragi, know? He gives a slip of paper. I will, of course, officer. As I said, it's probably nothing. The woman takes the slip of paper. It's a phone number. Thanks, like I'll get going then. So the library, eh? We'll get back to that, but we have to make a call first. Uh, may maybe we should talk to the drunk. Nah. That's not gonna work out. But we have our car here. So let's phone. And also Inside, we have to... You see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Yeah, yeah. Radio. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Um, have you heard back from the ICP about the serial number? Yes. The armor was produced by Fairweather in their facilities in Betancourt, sur la clé in 42. Sur la clé, okay. It was part of a special order for Corps de Pharmacy, a security firm contracted to protect the interests of Iranese pharmaceutical companies in the Seminine conflict. Interesting. That explains everything. So, it seems the armor went to Seminine. That's where the paper trail ends, though. Even the firm has proven difficult to track. Corps de Pharmacy has been renamed several times over in the years since the armor was issued. And what, it's, what is it called now? The most recently registered firm that the ICP has been able to connect to the CDP is a military contractor called Crenel. And the one before it was down well. I think they might be the same contractor. A suit of armor like this would have been manufactured with a particular person's physique in mind. You should ask for whom this suit was fitted. A suit of armor like this would have been customized to fit the wearer. There must be a record of the person to whom it was issued. Yes, but the ICP tends to be reluctant to share private sector records. I could try to talk them into it, though. This is a fun challenge for her. An opportunity to contribute beyond doing her job by rote. She'll gladly put in the extra effort for Team RCM. Hmm... Yes, please do try. It's imperative that we learn whose armor this was. Sure. Call back tomorrow. 
Hopefully I will have more information for you then. You'll find out more about the owner of the armored boots. Not yet. But I was able to convince the database people to serve private sector information. They promised to get back to me by tomorrow morning. Do you have any other questions? No. See you then. 57th, over and out. Her voice disappears into the void. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers. Yeah, we'll close the door though. Great. So now let's have a look. Uh, we, we, we did that. A call back in a day. We need some money for Gauti. And we need to we need to find a working class husband. He might be out in the cold. Well, now do we have money or something? Some money? Anywhere? Uh well, we don't have much, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh well. We could, we could, we could. We, what could we do here? A thought cabinet. Oh, we have some upgrade to this. And this, and this. Okay, all right. I, I mean, we could try pay Gotti. I mean, but we have we have only seven fifty. I believe that's that. So let's see what we'll what we could do. Maybe. Mm. Hmm. We could ask Kim about the pissing competition. <laughs> Hey Kim. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Hmm. The initial inspection of the dead body is done. Oh. Let's see. Hmm. Who made the call? We didn't find out who, who the call was made to, but. I think we'll just continue to find the working class guy and maybe, I mean, in the park was something, but he was first at the library. So he was here and that's why she is here. That's why we'll, we'll ask her here. Oh. Hi, Ace Detective. Are you here for more books? Uh, no, not really. Um, let's, let's get into there though. Maybe, maybe someone has seen something, eh? Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. I'm looking for a book about cockatoos. A book about cockatoos? There should be one upstairs, right next to the shelf of biographies. Yeah, okay. Uh, farewell for now, book peddler. There's the cockatoo book. Shelves filled to the brim with crime novels. Feet. Okay. Let's let's see. Maybe shelves here. full of biographies of. Maybe in that specialty shelf. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of para amidst the various books. You find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about. Wholeness, unity, balance. These three things are very important to the working class mind. Aha! Uh -huh. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid help. Interesting. Various paranatural books still litter the shelf. But we'll try to find something truly otherworldly. The throbbing in your head increases with every passing moment you gaze at this shelf. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, a small green book becomes apparent. The title of it reads, Medicinal Purposes of the Pale. The Pale? What is the Pale? The book contains very little explanation on the matter. 
This knowledge seems to be taken for granted. And what's the book about? The book contains descriptions of various pseudo-scientific therapies, alternative medicines, and folk remedies involving the pale, also known as le territoire. For example, it recommends vigorously swatting one's naked body with a venic or hand broom, made from the leafy twigs of a young birch tree from the near pale. Sounds invigorating. It is and good for the circulation too. What else? It also recommends consuming distilled spirits like vodka or whiskey that have been aged in the pale. Readers are instructed to cover these jars in a shallow hole just inside the pale and leave them there for 30 to 60 days, depending on the potency desired. What does this pale aged liquor Among do? Among other benefits, it is alleged to restore a damaged liver to perfect health. Ah, oh, that seems improbable nah how is that possible is it any more improbable than anything else that human beings put their faith in fair enough what else is it for there? general health and well-being readers are encouraged to take regular strolls through the pal though a sidebar cautions readers to limit each stroll to less than an hour these strolls promise to cleanse the mind of worries and the body of toxins especially if the perambulator performs this ritual in the nude. Nudity figures prominently in a number of these prescriptions. This is exactly what you need. Yeah, anything else of no? There's an entire section devoted to cures for men who are struggling to perform their marital obligations. I probably need that. Excuse me, sir. I believe you've been perusing that particular volume long enough. If you'd like to continue reading, I must insist you buy it. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, all right, let's buy this thing. Indeed. Something about that book does seem to have spoken to you. Well, I hope it contains what you're looking for. What books are these? Come, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not for free. I can't have you end up, like, opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh, no. Okay, goodbye. Uh, do we have do we have found some yeah we'll we'll collect some some bottles still maybe we'll find some near the near the working class guy there's there's not much time left we'll collect some bottles There's some bottles here. Can you can't you see? How how did we miss them? Uh, can we just take these, please? Uh, oh well. Do we have to equip that thing? Ah uh, yes, we we have to equip that thing. Now we can do that. Pry bar, chain cutters, a flashlight, maybe. Nah. Now we can take them. Come on. I just had it. I had it. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. Maybe there's something in here. Ooh, great, great stuff. Ah, we'll be rich. We'll be rich, Kim. Can we take his bottle too? <laughs> no. What about you guys? Have you... Have you seen... The purity of snow always reminds me of the purity of a man's soul. If he's got principles. All right, all right. And you? Have you seen the working class guy? I have really held down myself. This is divine. He takes a bite out of his sandwich. Yes, that's what you need, Gaston. More padding on that fat ass of yours. I hope your heart gives out. René, this this. It's a little pleasures. Life doesn't need to be a, um, a struggle. Hello, officer. How might I be of assistance on this fine day? Looks delicious. Can I have a bite of that? I'm sorry, officer, but I really don't share food. <laughs> Nothing personal. It's just a principle. The only one you have. <laughs> Okay, I'm not that hungry anyway. Oh, that's good. That's very good. 
You must have other business then. We could try, but um, yeah, we'll try. We'll try to convince Gaston to relinquish his sandwich. All right, this is how we're gonna do it. I admire your handiwork, Chef, but there are a few things I do differently. Like what, officer? His eyes rest this on is the as good as they come in Revachol, I assure you. His eyes rest on the sandwich. An array of delicious recipes flashes through your mind. Salads, salmon, sandwiches, bingo. Had you put a large slice of Oldovan cheese crosswise from the ham, it would minimize the component loss via crumbling. Mon Dieu, that is an excellent idea. That would virtually negate the component loss. I'll do you one better. The air pocket between cheese and ham could house pre-roasted paprika. Ce serait délicieux. Can you make that sandwich, officer? No, no. No one can. No. <laughs> sure, but I'm going to need yours as a prototype first. I hope you are not just tricking an old man out of the little he has left. Initial development takes time, of course, but in six to nine months you will eat the Sandwich of God. Oh, God of Sandwiches, maybe? But in the meanwhile, what can I do for you here and now, officer? Tell me what do you know about the dead man? Let me think. I heard someone was hanged and left on a tree for a week. But that's all I know, really. He looked at the clouds wistfully. Come on, you must have heard something. No, officers, I'm sorry. And I really would like to assist. You are both good guys. I can see that. Then help them, you wimp. You have plenty of shoulder with the ghost caviar in the Union. Someone must know something. He means caviar socialists. I wish I could, but I just don't know anything. I always keep my nose clean and don't gossip. Everyone knows and respects that. Odd. He doesn't seem to be lying, but there's something off here. Sounds a bit like you're holding back a bit. I'm not. I'm not even any... Of course he's holding back. His mouth is so full of union prick he can't even speak properly. The carabineer crosses his arms. Can I at least finish my fucking sentence before you piss on it? Is that okay, René? I'm not anyone impotent in the Union. I just know Evart. Are you a Union member? Oh, in many ways, yes. Like an honorary member. I attend meetings and parties. Help with little things. Evart, Edgar, and the older Debardeurs all know me. In many ways? Oh, yes. So you're not an actual member? Not in the technical sense. I don't have a vote or a membership card, but Evrard keeps me on the payroll, just for the little things. So that's what it was before, him hiding something. He tries to make it look like he's a big deal in the Union, and now the illusion is disintegrating before your and René's eyes. He doesn't know anything, because no one tells him anything. He's an outsider. Of course he's not a member. He's not a member of anything. I knew that. He's a Vezavain. Turns to where the wind blows and tries to look important. I hate this socialist rabble. But even siding with them is better than living your entire life on the fence. Never committing to anything. Pick a damn side already. What are the little things you do for Evra? Writing work mostly. Occasionally, he needs something written, and I happen to have a way with words, people say. What kind of things do you write for him? Oh, nothing official, I assure you. Just essays for the newspapers. About Martinez, and how things are, and how they could be. Evart and I have these long talks where... Well, he tells his little penman exactly what to say. It's commie propaganda, plain and simple. You should be ashamed of yourself. How do you know, Evra? Everyone in Martinez knows the Clare brothers. I taught this boy's human studies and history in the gymnasium. What do you know about history? You never witnessed history. 
only heard about it years later, when it had already moved on. You don't know history. The old soldier mumbles something under his breath and turns to face the sea. There he stands, proud, rigid and alone, like a cracking marble statue. Let's try not to get caught in the crossfire. Lest we leave riddled with bullet holes, this animosity is ancient. Ha, huh. are you a caviar socialist? I don't even consider myself a regular socialist. Politics is not really something I involve myself in, officer. But you need to believe in something. Freedom, the people, revolution, or even money. I believe everyone has the right to think and do whatever they want. Even if it's nothing at all. I'm very adaptable. Come on, you. The carabineer closes his eyes, like he's never going to open them again. Thanks, that's all for now. No, thank you. For being consummate professionals. You'll have this case wrapped up in no time. What are the rules of this game, by the way? Oh, the goal is to throw you bull. As close to the cochonnet as you can. That's the cochonnet. He points to a small wooden ball in the middle of the crater. Interesting. Tell me more about Petan. Well, first, you draw a circle about a half a meter in diameter. We made ours out of rope. Then, the order of play is determined by a coin toss. You win it. You get to throw the cochonnet. Then, the players aim to throw their bulls as close to the cochonnet as possible. They must stay in the circle and keep both feet planted. Anything else about Petang? It seems so fascinating. I could, but I'd rather not. I don't want to take up your time with trivial details, officer. I think I get it, thanks, Gaston. You'll put that knowledge to good use in 20, I mean 50 years. I'm sure of that, officer. I don't like where this is going, officer. Don't you think we should do something else now? No, I want to talk to him. I promise it won't be about Petang. <sighs> Hurry up, then. Why did you ask about the Union again? Sure, officer. Yeah, okay, okay. No, thank you. Okay, okay, see you. So you don't know that much anymore. Uh, we need some bottles still. Right. Are there some bottles? Because we need the mu Something... Something was here. Wait, 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 wait. Something. What was that? It's pretty chirps and clicks of swallows fill the air. Okay. There is this thing. What, what about this thing? The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Something has drawn me to it. Maybe he hmm. has rested there. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. Uh, all right. All right. Don't be such a spoil sport. Now we need to find this working class man. Oh, there's something to eat here, is that? Noz... Nozafid. Aha. What's that? Roy's Pawn Shop. Fast cash for faster times. Sweet, so he, here we could gain money. There's a plastic tear. There's something in here, maybe. Fingerless gloves. And what is this? Oh, ah, there's someone standing here. Mm. Water lock out of order until Wednesday, 7.15. Barry, can you hear me, buddy? What's Good about morning this, to you, officers. A burly man hangs out by the water lock, carving up a generous serving of salami with an old hunter's knife. His eyes are fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the water lock and on an enormous billboard that has fallen down into the canal between them. You know what caused this wreckage? Point of the smashed billboard in the canal. I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers oh. in Rivershall. 
The words, Dear Devil Driver, sound ominous to you. Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here. Especially a water lock. The rest of the coast is closed off till then. Can I have some of that salami? Sure thing. Cuts off a slice of Want salami. Want some too, officer? Why not? Lieutenant ponders the offer for a moment, then decides to go for it. He takes a slice of salami from the man and chews on it. Do you know what's further down the coast? Well, there's the fishing village, an abandoned fish market, a bizarro church. Not much use to the congregation, though. There always seems to be something wrong with mm, it. A bizarro church. That sounds interesting. We need to get in there. Maybe find Faith. He thinks for a moment. Yeah, not really much else. Just bombed out ruins. Right by. Now, what's this thing? A couple of indicator lights are missing from this control panel. Loose wires dangle from the now vacant holes. Hmm. In the middle is a lever. Beneath it, a small metal plaque. This panel usually closes the water lock, turning it into a bridge that lets you cross the canal. But there's a crashed Samaran butter sign in the way. Pulling the lever probably won't do anything. Well, let's try anyway. Pull the lever all the way up until the metal clicks against the contact pins. You hear a soft clunk. Then nothing happens. Push it harder! Nothing happens. A cold gust of wind blowing in from the sea interrupts the silence of the situation. Mm-hmm. The return lumps himself by staring at your activities. Nothing harder. happens. A cold gust of wind. Yeah, okay, okay. Release it. The spring brings the lever back to its original position. You still need to close the water lock to get across the canal. Some other way. Wasn't there a sign over there saying functionality will be restored on Wednesday morning? I will pull again. Pull the lever all the way up until nothing happens. Okay, the okay, the, okay. Wasn't there okay. a sign? We'll leave. We'll leave. All right. It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Um... What we could we could have do we have we can interact with a sandwich oh, we can inspect the item that's the ham sandwich looks fresh and nutritious in your hand begging to be eaten a treat of this magnitude should not be enjoyed alone ah okay 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 um hey hey Kim let's share. I'll pass. Thanks. Oh, come on. When you hold something up long enough, some people are compelled to take it. Try it on the lieutenant. Yes, hold the sandwich up for the lieutenant to take. Thank you, but no, I'm not hungry. Keep holding the sandwich. No. Do not lower the sandwich. No. Hold the sandwich up, moving it closer to his chin. The lieutenant's eyes express an absolute lack of interest. <laughs> Move the sandwich around in front of the lieutenant's mouth and make aircraft noises. The lieutenant stands next to you, but he might as well exist in a parallel realm. This oh, man on. does not crack under pressure. Stars would die before he'd succumb to any kind of manipulation. With this realization comes a sudden flash of pride. <laughs> uh, um... Oh well. Oh well. We'll lower the sandwich. The lieutenant nods. Why won't you take it? I'm just not hungry and therefore have little reason to take it. It isn't about hunger, Kim. It's about camaraderie. I want to share with camaraderie. you. Camaraderie? By sharing the sandwich, you and I solidify the bond between us. Is it really necessary? The bond between officers, partners, are paramount. That's how trust is built. Trust saves lives it is is this necessary is friendship necessary brotherhood okay okay they are all necessary let's share the sandwich if it matters that much to you friends forever eat your half of the sandwich sure sure time to go solve a murder investigation could have been healed by that but <laughs> no <laughs> okay okay Let's find out what else we can do. And also, we need some more of these bottles. There's a bottle. Oh, I've seen the bottle. Ah, there's that's some kind of 
freaking bottle. Can you take that bottle? Uh, it was some kind of plastics. No, into the pawn shop. What is there? We need money, you know. What is this? Some kind of machine, an antique cash register. Ooh, so we could get cash from that. What's that? In the dark, a film projector is whirring away, and here, bust of a woman. The plug simply says D D E I. That is the pawn shop man. He's wow, he has isolated himself. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, others in rags, others yet in bright blue uniforms. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. On a knickknack stand. Try to find something pretty and cool here, then use it to win her back. To have a truly cool figurine in the box under the table. Everything you pick out seems faded, chipped, and sad somehow. Most of them are just broken toys. Win her back? Yes. Buy something nice. A figurine. This sounds off. You shouldn't trust this guy. Ah. Uh. Okay, we'll, we'll inspect the figurines and This set of soldiers isn't meant to look impressive. A few have rifles, but most of them carry pistols. Some even shovels and tall sticks. Point of the figurines and rags, are these even soldiers? You're probably talking about the revolutionaries, yes? The man yes, behind they the... are soldiers. Revolutionary soldiers. The man behind the glass answers. I think their poverty has been exaggerated for effect. When you place them next to the royalists, it doesn't seem like they could possibly win. Hmm. Uh, it's meant to give people hope. Even we can do it. Maybe. He seems to have his own take on the conflict played out in perpetuity by these toys. It might be interesting to find out what it is. The blue uniform. This set of soldiers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we had that. I think their poverty has been exaggerated. Okay, Maybe. okay. He seems to have his own take. No. On the, they're not all blue. These figurines also wear gold coats and caps, complemented by orange trousers. They are variously posed, wielding swords and rifles with bayonets. Wait, this looks like René, the old guy who was playing Petan. This is what the loyalists looked like, yes, at first. Then they wised up and got camouflage. Inspect the f so the figurine. Point of the blue figurines. Are these royalist soldiers? Which ones? Ah, those. Yes, they are. I find the paint job a bit gaudy, but children like the bright colours indiscriminately. Hmm, and the knights on horseback. Big men on big horses, clad in lamella armour and carrying flintlocks. The kind that would mow down a line of enemy soldiers in the blink of an eye. Point at the knights on horse, like, who are they, man? Franco Nigerian knights. I used to be very serious about these guys. Oh, so you were one of the kids collecting these A long, game. long time ago. Okay, let's take a step back. And ask him. It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. The man at the counter turns to you slowly. What can I do for you? He asks. His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movement of light across the walls of the shop. Now that the RCM is here, tell me, have you had any trouble lately? I haven't had any problems myself. Though some of my customers have complained about inconsistent law enforcement. Who are your customers, usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake. People who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Hmm. Hmm. 
quite the collection indeed. It keeps me entertained. The attention is drawn once more to the play of light and shadow on the walls behind you. Hmm. You might be able to aid our investigation. I doubt it, but I can try and answer any questions you may have. You know anything about the recent hanging? I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business. Bad for everyone. He doesn't know anything. Think you could help me get a corpse out of a tree? The corpse behind the hostel, I assume. I don't have a truck with a mounted platform or anything of that sort myself. Ask around the harbour. There might be some workers there who'd be willing to help. Actually, that's all I've got. The pawnbroker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colours. Is Roy high? And if yes, what is he on? Okay. He definitely is high. Whatever it is, you've probably done it. And many other things besides. But you can't cut through the jumble of sensations to get to the answer. <sighs> Looking at his wares, talking to him, that might give you more clues. A guarded man like him wouldn't tell you if you asked out loud. Indeed, indeed. Something I'd like to sell. Let me have a look. Oh, I'd like to sell my clothes. No. <laughs> I'll check my pockets. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Uh, oh, that's that's not really, really, that's not really enough. Mm. I have a fascinating photo of a corpse here. Show him the photo. Oh, no. I don't like those kinds of objects. No sale. He barely even looks at it. Do you know what the tattoos mean? A photic path. Counter radiance network, anti magnetism. It's darkness. That's all I know. Sell me something lighter. You have absolutely no idea what aphotic paths are, but the tattoos on the man are not that. I don't have anything to sell. At the Another moment. time, perhaps. Do you happen to have any guns like the ones carried by the Office of, of the Citizens Militia? Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. I promptly sold her the gun I pawned a couple days back. This is a pawn shop, and it did feel as if you've met before. Oh God, the lieutenant shifts from one foot to another, alert. Was the buyer a policeman too? She didn't seem like a policeman. Although she kept referring to herself as a pig, which was odd. Oh my goodness. I found her interest in the gun a bit obsessive, but I was just happy to get rid of it and of her. Truth be told, she was terrifying. Right, so let me get this right. You sold your sidearm issued by the citizens' militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? Oh God. Miraculously. His face does not reveal what's happening inside. Hmm. Maybe she's a vigilante, wants to prove she can do our bo jobs better than we can. It's possible in these parts of town. We ought to find her and discourage her from taking justice into her own hands. He looks around worried. Any idea, can, idea where I can find this buyer? My apologies, officer. But I have no idea where she was coming from, or where she went. A needle in a haystack. There is nothing you can do about it now. You just have to hope you luck upon her somehow. And I really sold you my gun. You... Uh, you were adamant about getting rid of it, officer. Said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the Revachol Citizens Militia. And I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off the charts photon emissions. The unhealthy kind. He's not telling you the whole story. It seems he's trying to spare you. Uh, what, what, what else can you tell me about it? There's something... You weren't quite 
yourself, officer. What was that like? You were very distraught. You said the gun was a threat to your life and that you can't trust yourself with it tonight and that you need the money. When I said that I don't normally buy firearms, you put the gun barrel in your mouth and sort of sucked on it. Then I agreed to take it. Wow, how much did I sell the gun for? Fifteen real. The lieutenant looks from you to Roy, and then back to you. It's clear that he hopes this tableau might still turn out to be a bad dream. It's not, though. This has got to be the most. Wow, there's pity there, too. In case you didn't notice. I'm sorry you had to see me in that state. Uh, we we don't have to talk about it any further. No apologies necessary, officer. At least now I know how I lost my sidearm. Let's talk about something else. Of course. Uh, I, um. Yeah, and about other business, right? Okay. Um, what's here? What's the military wear with a few more eccentric fashions thrown in? Kim, yes. can we... Uh, okay, okay, so you're accepting as You're accepting that. Now, that's nice of you. It's awfully nice. What's above this? The boomboxes on the shelf look well-loved and well-traveled. Chipped, dented. They stare at you with the unblinking eyes of their tape reels. We'll stand on the tips of our toes to see more. One especially catches your eye. Deep gold and amber ah. plastic with a big old handle on top. A classic boombox that says... Stereo 8 approved. This is you. Golden orange. A sunset suite. Just make sure it works before you buy it. Oh. What I really want to know is, could this device come in handy in my police work? If police work means playing tapes, sure. You can use it for that. Or any other time you'd need to play a tape. Like a beach party. With sand and sun and seagulls dancing on the breeze. Turn to Kim. Theoretically, could I bring it to a beach party? Theoretically, yes. But we don't have time right now. It's generally murder investigation first, then beach party. Um, you're right. It's really the end that I needed for a requiem for all life. For. It'll play that. Any requiem, really. Also dirges. Madrigals, charms, as long as it's on tape. Sounds like he's already heard the Requiem for All Life Forms and wasn't that impressed. Hmm. You sure this is in working order? Absolutely. I've tested each one myself with recordings of speech, found sounds and music from a variety of genres, even though I don't really like music. That's odd. Why doesn't he like music? You don't seem to be the type. What do you like then? The stuff I record myself. Silverware shaking in drawers as motor cars race by. Nocturnal animals climbing on the roof. Airship rotors. That kind of thing. Fascinating. Hmm. Maybe you should ditch music as well. Get into these more experimental sounds he's describing. Okay, that's all, man. Good, good stuff, good stuff. En enjoy your good stuff, by the way. Enjoy your good stuff. So, what's this thing? A typical Martinez streetlight sits among assorted floor and paper lamps. A streetlight in here? Where did you get this? It was brought to me to be altered. We are not here to investigate the theft of city property. He leans in so the bomb broker doesn't hear You it. have to admit it's rather clever what he's done with it. He pauses, studying the light. Let your gaze, our gaze run over the street. The light pole has been carefully cut and the wiring has been redone and attached to a standard indoor plug. The light buzzes faintly, but persistently. This would make quite a statement in your living room. Is that a street light? Yes, officer. As you see, it's in perfect working order. How much would you want for 700 it? 700 real. 700? A bargain, I dare say. Um, um, 
It sounds about right, I mean, and it wasn't easy sawing off that street hey, lamp. I don't know where it came from, but it's not every day you get to buy and sell something so extraordinary. Yeah, there's nothing else I need to know about the light and everything. <laughs> oh, God. 700 real. Why is everything so expensive? Why can't we get more money? So money, is that all that drives us to, to something? Already wasted another hour and we have not found the missing husband, but there is there is something here. Isn't that kind of a bottle? No, it's not a bottle. It's not definitely not a bottle. Uh, someone sitting here, what's this? Helpline to the company that controls the drawbridge. Ah, there's a trash can, and oh, there's much more. Hey, hey, hey. And this? Hot air rises up from the sewer, sour, acidic, and strangely comforting. What's, what's in this thing? There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. A variety of shapes and colors. Oh, that would be cool. You like sunglasses, officer? I'll put the latest styles right here. The vendor takes a pair of sunglasses and sticks them under your nose. Stylish shades, huh? They'd be even more stylish if you paid for them with net worth. Go over and ask him. I will try them on. Abort. These are hideous. What's more, they don't even fit your face. You can feel them pinching your nose and chafing against your brow. Damn, officer! You look like a mega secret spy! Very secret! They're practically made for you! I'll let you have them for... two real and fifty cents. No, you are definitely not buying those. Okay, I'm two cents. Are you sure? But they look so good on you! You should think this through, officer. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that, but not now. These are all boring. Boring third-rate ho-hum sunglasses made of cheap Siraese plastic. The kind of plastic that melts in the sun. Oh, God, Those UV stickers are almost certainly just there for the show. If anything, these lenses probably direct more UV light into your pupils. A UV magnifier. These are all first-rate sunglasses. Premium design, super material, very cool! UV resistant! These will definitely keep your eyes safe and cool while doing your dangerous police work. Yeah, we'll see if we can find the perfect sunglasses. Ah, I see. A pair of water blue shades. The writing on the left temple says sub Insulindic rendezvous. The frame appears to be hand carved out of bone. Oh, very interesting choice, officer. Very high culture. For the first time, the street vendor's voice trails off as he watches you inspect the glasses. We'll try this them on. This is how a sea monster sees the world. You've become a sea monster. Giant. Yes. Hidden and strangely tender. We can already feel the strength coming from our monstrization. Yes but they also make your soul quiver like jello. So deep. It's touching. Wow, officer. You look so cool. The street vendor has picked up his pace again as you observe the world through deep sea tinted lenses. And they can be yours for a mere three real. My regular customers have passed them all up because they've got no taste. But you found them. Kim, what about these? The lieutenant tilts his head and steps back, eyes narrowed in a thorough examination. It's a case to him. You look like a musician. Like a blind musician. But you could do worse. Take them if you want. Yeah, we'll take the deep, cool, deep man blue ones. Who knows his style. Much respect. Uh, we'll leave for now. We've got the style on. Where's the style? Of insulodinic rendezvous. Less perception though. We have fingerless we have fingerless gloves. We have these gloves. They're about interfacing. These are but electrochemical. We have the white tank top. 
Because this... Uh, we'll see about that, eh? But but the the shades are definitely yeah, that's that's something and that's something we 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 need. What's in that? What's in that thing? There are clothes inside, cheap second-hand clothes, smelling of strangers' body odors. Don't be shy. These are premium class clothes. Good quality fabrics, best retro design. Save the economy with your style, officer. But we have no money. How about some premium class service over here? Like paying with net worth. Go over and ask him if you can do that. Save the economy. That sounds off. Save the economy? What are you talking about? Haven't you heard, officer? We've got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash. Keep it in circulation. Don't buy new things. Buy eco. Ah... Uh... I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Why exactly does the economy need saving? Look around, officer. You see all these premium goods just sitting there, not getting bought? We've got to keep the flow of goods moving. Is this really the economy we want to leave to our children? Ah, uh, well, you're right. We've got to save mother economy. That's the spirit. We've all got to do our part. Your part is to open the box and buy some clothes. Browse you find it. your hands deep in tattered and faded garments made from weird polyester blends that make your body itch and sweat in all the wrong places. Ah, oh, I know these. They're Economical, terrible. Economical, but also trendy. Look first hand, buy second hand. Keep the economy moving. We'll, we'll try to find something special here. Something cold grazes your hand. Synthetic and sleek. A windbreaker. Surf, it says. But also, wind, summer, 100% waterproof, and sport. All in different typefaces. Good choice, officer. Mega sporty. And it's only 450 for you, sir. But we don't have the money, so thank you. And we'll see you. We'll see you around, man. It's all good. It's really all nice. Are there any bottles? Oh, we just saw something. Eh? What is that? A sewer grate, a gateway to the river of filth. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's here. And it's it's not really a gateway because we cannot really find out about. What about you? Have you seen? Have Stuck you seen a man? Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. What's on your mind? You seem like a man who knows about drugs. Ah, man, me and narcotics go way back. Felt his hands I spent good time surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know? But, those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? Maybe you're connected to the pawn shop man? Uh, do you finance those other addictions with drug trafficking? Hey man, that's serious criminal talk. Are you trying to pull some sort of an entrapment thing on me? Entrapment is a practice whereby an officer of the law induces a person to commit a criminal offence that the person would have otherwise been unlikely to commit, usually through some trickery, persuasion, or fraud. Nah, no, but let me be straight with you. I'm trying to figure out who's smuggling drugs out of Terminal B. We have a credible lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bell shipment from the harbour to load it on their lorry and drive it to Jamrock. Not me, ma'am. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. This jam's got folks up in arms, and I'm afraid it's headed toward a conflagration. Ah, uh, who do you think could be conducting the tr drug trade Look, in? Man, I try to stay away from the criminal underbelly of Revachol. I'm a guest here. You really need to find another man to probe with those questions. We wouldn't say he's lying, sire. It's not a lie. It's something else. Impossible to say what at this point. But there's something in him. Some trepidation. Okay. See you next time, man. See you next time. Is there just a bottle or something? Bottles. Bottles. Bottling. Bottling out. Bottling in. We have read that already, but maybe it has changed. Did it? 
An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing towards the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured, and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. What did this king do? Even by the standards of the Philippian kings, old sumptuous Philip was known for his profligacy. In what way? Well, he blew through the whole national treasure. Ah, oh, yeah, I know. Starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers. The suzerain of Rivershaw. I remember. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the anti centennial revolution, an end to his family line and the monarchy on the Insulindian Isola. And how, in the, how the hell did he manage to blow through the entire national treasury? Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber where he stored unfathomable wealth, Krugerrands, bars of gold ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. Sounds like just our men. Whispers, he slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers, like some obese dragon, instead of a bed, like a normal person. Sol Orum, the, the son of, go of gold. The man certainly knew how to live. Ah, uh, I'd like to sleep on gold, hustler style. But wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine. The what? Dip. You see, old Philippe, wasn't just good at squandering the national treasury on gold and ceremonial weaponry. He was also a prodigious snorter of nose candy. That's a lot of process. His, his courtiers said it helped him connect with the higher realms. What is that nose Cocaine. candy? Okay, and he was addicted to That's that? That's what the revolutionaries said 150 years later. Right before they emptied out the royal mausoleum, and dumped His Majesty's mortal remains in the Insulindian Bay. So it's not really believable, or where is he buried now? Beneath the cold waters of the Insulindian Bay, ah. thrown there by the revolutionaries after they cleaned out the Royal Mausoleum. What happened to the statue? The original was blown apart by communards, then further damaged during the landing of the Coalition's airships during the turn of the century revolution, when Martinez was leveled. Hmm. Wow, so it, it has come from ruin. Most historians think the Coalition's hasty landing may have ultimately saved the statue. If the Communards had more time, they would have reduced it up to even finer pieces. And who restored the money? Some monument? years ago, a group of liberal, artistically inclined individuals, designers mostly, thought it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of Rivershaw in the poorest part of the city. The statue is supposed to capture the moment it was blown apart, like an instant frozen in time, a rare butterfly trapped in amber, floating on a sea of shit. Ah, so funny, nihilistic. People in Martinez tend to disagree, as do many prominent art critics and thought leaders with more nuanced social awareness than the young ironists. Those critics might have it wrong though, there's more to it than just ironism, but you can't say what precisely. Perhaps this art mystery will be solved at a later time. Philip III, the squanderer, however, with his bronze face up in the air, doesn't seem concerned about what the hoi polloi think of him in death. Not that he ever did in life either. Ah, oh, interesting. Wow, you work hard. I do. Oh, yes. You hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. What hard work do I do exactly? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic, sand, and lelonium after you re-emerged. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way, and you won't let it break you. You ride. Yeah, I'll ride till That's I die. That's just what it's like. Life and death. But you got gills on your side, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco Negros and the Solas. It ain't easy, but you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. Yeah, and there's the pawning stuff off to that suspicious Roy guy. Yeah, you're in the sales business. 
shake them for shit, and then pawn it off. Law officer style. I took some money from that manana guy. You didn't log that in as a donation either. You don't log any of that shit in. You're a straight rider. I mean, yeah, I did take that bribe from the Jewish oh, yeah. woman. You took that bribe hard. You're a killer. Great. Uh, I guess I've made some good jills. Sure. 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 And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? But you still hustle 24-7, ride or die. Now, ask yourself, are you rich? I'm rich. Get out of here. You're a pauper. You work harder than anyone. Almost rode yourself to the grave and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? Because of that Garty guy. The Gart man has set himself up one of those self-replicating money structures. You should learn from it. Don't play the victim. Think, hustler. Think with your head. There's a market for corrupt cubs, but I'm... But the immigrant cops have price. What? <laughs> Why am I so poor? Because of the taxes. G-Man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket, stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, fart, so much as sneeze. Aunt tax is almost non-existent in the Gossam estate that is Revachon. I thought there were no taxes. You and I both, but they got those indirect modes of taxation. Sales tax, excise duty, extraction tax. This tax that doesn't even have a name. Plus, there's the stuff people in other countries pay for that makes them ask for more money from you here. The Gossam estate's a myth. In total, the coalition government is taking 98% of all your money. Um. Are you sure? That seems like a pretty big number. What are you not sure about? They're milking your nipples till they bleed. Can't you see? Aren't you sick and tired of having bloody nipples? Uh, this isn't helping me solve my money problem. It's only making me into a free market. What type. are you, a racist? Don't be a racist. Be a cool immigrant, ultra-liberal free market advocate. Ride or die. Keep it street. This guy's appropriating the emerging Boogie Street lingo as part of his sales pitch for the free market economy. You're trying to sound like a Boogie Street youth to peddle me this stuff, aren't you? Yeah. Ain't it cool, Ryder? Ain't it street? Uh, it's not. It's not. We don't, we don't need this. But we need some more exploration uh, very soon. So, thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. This is, this is us investigating. And happy gaming, says Immanuel Khan. We will return to these miserable places where the rain is falling down on our heads. A strange rhythm, a rhythm that sparks dreams, maybe nightmares, or maybe fantasies. And while we stand in a couple of big letters, a book is written around our life. Lines of text that surround us and keep us imprisoned. See you soon and happy gaming.